Welcome everybody, I am Shushmita Mondol. Today I am going to talk about one of my works that is Synthesis and Spectroscopic Characterization of Stargate Specific Nano Hybrid for Redox Buffering in Cellular Milieu. I am presently working as a Senior Research Fellow under the supervision of Professor Shomir Kumar Pal, Senior Professor, CBMS Department, SN Bosa National Center for Basic Sciences. So let's start with a brief layout, that is uh, what I am going to talk about today. There is a background from where we have started, then I will explain my work in detail, followed by the conclusion and acknowledgement. So the background. So why we are talking about nanomaterials in the field of medicine? Because there are a thousand synthetic drugs are available already in the market. But synthetic drugs have some problem regarding their bioavailability, non-specific interaction and undesirable side effect. Whereas nanomaterials have some advantages because they are highly specific and highly reactive due to higher surface to volume ratio and they can transport across the biological membrane and now new nanomaterials are emerging that can do the diagnosis and the therapeutics in uh, simultaneously so they are known as theranostic nanomaterial. FDA till date has approved 51 nanodrugs and 77 products are still in clinical trial. So what we are doing in our lab, we are taking an inorganic nanoparticle, tagging it with their organic part, giving rise to a constant known as nanohybrid, such as functionalized MN304. We capped MN304 with organic lichen like citrate, lactate, chitosan and make it water soluble because to be a good drug, it must be water soluble. It should be water soluble. So uh, it, uh, the uh, capping also induced the ROS generation ability in room temperature and in the absence of light. So what we have done with this nanoparticle, this nanoparticle generate ROS and destroy the bilirubin. So the uh, mice with hyperbilirubinemia, they, uh, the bilirubin, serum bilirubin level comes down to the, uh, down within the normal range in only two to three hours. And also this nanoparticle, we have seen that it can clear the lead or the heavy metal from the organ, from the circulations and also recover the damage the, nano, uh, the heavy metal did by, via ROS generation. So one nanoparticle that can generate ROS and that can also recover the damage done by ROS, this is really interesting. So we have started our investigation. If we just go back 10 years, we can see that if there is ROS that is very harmful per cell and everyone see, uh, everyone, uh, that time everyone uh, said that ROS is villain, but uh, which is not true for our case. So back in 5 to 6 years, what we have said that there are people who are establishing a new school of thought that is matching with us, that is no, ROS is not at all bad, a minimum amount of ROS is need, needed for the cell to perform its normal physiological function. So we have said that yes, our medicine is not acting as an antioxidant, it is acting by redox mediated healing. And just one year back, our nature paper and published by a pioneer group working in this redox biology said that yes, they are absolutely right and cited us and said that yes, the oxidative stress is not at all bad. They classified and broke all the prejudices about the oxidative stress and classified it in two groups, that is oxidative use stress and oxidative distress. And then we have modified our techniques that are oxidative mediated healing to redox buffering. So I'm coming on to the point what is oxidative use stress, oxidative distress and redox buffering. If there is a cell in normal condition, oxidant concentration is little higher than antioxidant concentration and the basal level of ROS is present, this is called oxidative eustress. But if there is excessive ROS is present, then oxidant concentration is much higher than the antioxidant concentration and the antioxidant cannot cope up with the excess ROS, so the damage happened. But if we introduce a redox buffer, it will uh, balance the antioxidant and oxidant concentration and maintain the redox homeostasis so the cell state at oxidative use state condition. So uh, what we have taken, we have taken uh, chitosan capped mn there are two questions, that why chitosan and uh, what is chitosan? Chitosan is a polysaccharide derived from chitin and why chitosan? Because it is stable in GI tract and absorbed by intestine, that is it can uh, cross the pH barrier of stomach. So why GI tract is so much important? Because we have seen in the medical field, the ROS mediated GI tract diseases, especially ulcerative colitis, colitis, claiming a huge number of life around the globe and the medication cost is huge. So we need a cheap medication, medication and an effective medication. 
So we have started uh, working with this nanoparticle. You can see here the tame image. It is crystalline and uh, the size of the nanoparticle is 3 to 4 nanometer. And uh, the, we have confirmed the, from the XRD studies that yes, it is MN304 nanoparticle and the hydrodynamic diameter, that means the core of the nanoparticle and the ligand, uh, the size of the ligand, the whole, na uh, nano, uh, whole nanoparticle is about 7 to 8 nanometer. Then we have done the RY study here. You can see the nanoparticle can uh, in, uh, uh, induce the uh, dark ROS. And here we have uh, done the anti radical activity that is uh, luminol and H2 to give the chemiluminescence. But when we add uh, our nanoparticle with H2 and give luminol, the, uh, it scavenges the H2 which is a type of ROS. So the luminescence is not there. So our nanoparticle can generate ROS and can scavenge ROS. So now we have to quantify. Uh, how much it can scavenge just like pH buffer we have to find the redox buffering capacity. So what we have done we have taken a milky water at increasing concentration of H2O2 and you can see the ROS production is increased and whereas we have when we put the our nanoparticle in the uh, milky water and uh, increase the concentration of H2O2 you can see that the uh, ROS production is hindered here. And we have calculated the buffering capacity from this graph where we have put uh, 1 by ROS production rate uh, versus 1 by uh, oxidant concentration. Uh, and uh, the slope of this graph dictate the redox buffering capacity because redox buffering capacity is numerically equal with the magnitude of change of concentration and of an oxidant or reductant added to the solution uh, to change the effective condition, uh, eff effective potential to change the effective potential by one unit. So here you can see the slope, uh, here you can see the buffering capacity for the only water is much less, uh, is much less uh, compared to the uh, water that uh, that has been added, uh, the, where we have added our nanoparticle. So uh, conclusion, uh, when uh, we uh, proceed to in vivo studies, here you can see that we have taken a cancer cell which stays in oxidative distress. When we, uh, when we incubate it with our nanoparticle, you can see the ROS concentration is in, uh, decreasing and it is coming to the oxidative eustress. Not all ROS are vanishing. Okay. Uh, so what is the conclusion that we have made a nanoparticle that can sense the oxidative state of the cell. If the cell is in eustress condition, it will undergo this mechanism and produce electron that will react with the dissolved O2 and produce uh, ROS. This ROS will be neutralized by the reverse reaction. But if the cell uh, stays at the oxidative distress condition, then in the addition of this mechanism, it will also employ two other mechanisms that is Mn from the nanoparticle will act as a radical scavenger and the dissolution of Mn ions helps the cell's antioxidant system because most of the antioxidant enzyme have Mn as their cofactor. So what is the, uh, and so the cell is uh, stays at the oxidative use So what is the conclusion in one line? It, will, the st it is the material is stable in GI tract, is a competent agent for redox buffering and the potential therapeutic agent for the ROS associated GI tract diseases. So now acknowledgement, I want to acknowledge my guide, Professor Shomir Kumar Pal, for the endless support and the uh, time he has uh, dedicated for us. Professor Vimalendu Bhushan Bhattacharya for introducing me with Professor Pal, Dr. Shomendra Darbar for his all the preclinical studies, my senior, especially Anirudhuda Pritam Dan Monojitta, my colleagues Ria Dipanjan and Neha, and my junior, junior, especially Manali, all the faculty members of Department of Biochemistry, University of Calcutta, funding agencies, all the lab technicians, and especially SN Bose National Center for Basic Sciences for, for providing an excellent work environment. Thank you.